This is The Hunter, a Chinese folk tale as retold by Mary Casanova, illustrated by Ed Young. Once in a tiny Chinese village wedged between mountains and sea lived a young hunter named Hai Li Bu. Though Hai Li Bu was a good hunter, providing fresh fish and meat for the villagers as best he could, a drought came. Day after dry day, the sun scorched the countryside and burned the villagers' crops. Soon there wasn't enough food to go around. The children rarely laughed, the young women seldom sang, and the white-haired people were too weak to leave their mats. Worst of all, the villagers began to argue and stopped listening to one another. With each passing day, Hai Li Bu hunted deeper and deeper in the forest, desperately searching for game. One day, he spotted a small pearly snake warming itself on a rock. Not wanting to disturb the snake's sleep, Hai Li Bu stepped softly around it on the withered grass. Suddenly, a crane dropped from the clouds, flapping its long gray wings. It snatched up the pearly snake and climbed high into the sky. Help me, the little snake cried. What? thought Hai Li Bu. The snake can speak? With a whisper, the hunter's arrow flew, whoosh, and though it missed the crane by a feather, the bird squawked and released its hold. The little snake dropped to the forest floor and silently slithered away. The next day, when Hailey Blue returned to the forest, the little snake approached him on the path. My father, the dragon king of the sea, she said, wants to thank you for saving my life. Will you come? Though Haile Boo needed to hunt, he didn't want to offend the snake. Of course, he replied, and followed her down a winding path to a crystal palace beneath the sea. From his throne, the dragon king asked, what do you want for saving my daughter? Haile Boo shrugged his broad shoulders. What more could I need except to better provide for my village? The dragon king showed Haile Boo his thousand and seventy treasures, sparkling red rubies, forest green emeralds, ocean blue sapphires, and shimmery pink pearls. I will give you anything, he said. Your treasures are beautiful, the hunter answered, but the only thing I desire is to understand the language of animals. Then I can be a better hunter. The dragon king roared back and from out of his mouth shot a round stone. Take it, he said, and your wish will come true. But remember one thing, you must not pass on the secret of your gift or you will surely be turned to stone like the one you now hold. With the stone in his leather pouch, Haile Boo hurried back to the forest. From the chatter of finches, he learned where mountain goats wandered and where wild boar bedded down. He learned of shallows where fish were plentiful and where clams clustered in the sand. Each day, Haile Boo returned to his parched village with an even greater offering of food. Soon the village was filled with laughter. The children's cheeks grew round and soft. The white-haired people left their mats to share their stories. The young women sang songs and whispered about who Haile Boo would someday marry. But one dawn, the forest was unusually full of the chatter of birds and animals. Lightning and heavy rains are coming, cried the foxes. The entire village will be flooded. 
Tomorrow, the bears bellowed, the mountain top will crumble to the sea. Who knows, the birds called, how many people will die? Haile Boo's mouth went dry as the drought. He dropped his bow to the ground and rushed back to his village to warn his people. A village elder stepped forward. Where did you learn this terrible news? Haile Boo suddenly remembered the Dragon King's warning. He whispered, Do you want me to die so you can believe? Of course not, the elder said. He squared his arms and gestured to the simple huts. But you ask us to leave our homes. How can we know what you say is true? Haile Boo stroked his chin. What should he do? If they wouldn't listen, should he flee and save himself? The villagers pressed closer. Like the wind that began to stir the treetops, they whispered among themselves. How could he make them listen? He reached into his pouch and in his palm held out a round, luminous stone. But the villagers looked blankly at the stone and at Haile Boo. The hunter sighed. He studied the villagers' faces, young and old, more splendid than the jewels. No, of course he could never allow them to be destroyed. Raindrops began to fall, plink, 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 on the dusty street. Haile Boo drew a deep breath. He told of the little snake and of the king, dragon king's gift. Then he pointed to the ink line of birds flying south. Look, he said, the birds flee. As he spoke, his toes grew stiff as stones. Tomorrow the mountain will be struck by lightning, he added, and his legs became granite hard. The village will be flooded, he said, and his hands stopped in midair. Listen, he said, believe me and have courage. And as he spoke these last words, his lips turned to stone. The villagers were stunned. They threw themselves at Haile Boo's feet and wept. As the rain grew heavier, the villagers ran to their houses, packed what they could carry on their backs, and fled. The next day, as the animals had warned, thunder rattled the countryside, lightning crackled the mountain peak, and boulders crashed into the valley below. Raindrops fell in sheets and washed the valley, utterly destroying the tiny village. Days passed, and the people returned. But before rebuilding their village, they searched for Haile Boo in his stone prison. They found him half buried in the mud, and gently, gently, with many hands and many tears, carried him to what remained of the top of the mountain. If only we had not doubted him, the people said. If only we had listened. And to this day, it is said that somewhere in China, high on a mountain peak, still stands the statue of Haile Bu, gazing upon his valley below, where the villagers listen to every person, including the youngest child. The end.